All right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how long we're going to go, but we're going to go. Anyone with me? Is anybody with me? Are we going to stay until Jesus is done? And just so you know, Jesus may be done in the middle of my message. So if you need to run to the altar and get healed or, or break free or whatever, uh, the altar call is whenever he calls you. It's time to break past all the garbage of religion that holds us back. It's time that our young people really find out that we serve the living God. And that he is here to be experienced. I know that some of you know that. I know that others of you need to find it out. I think some of our older people need to be reminded. I'm coming at everybody today. So, all right, really quick. Have we got any dads in the room? Any dads in the house? Yeah. All you dads, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Are there any first-time dads in the room today? This, this year was your first-time dad experience. Anybody? Okay, anybody? Um, anybody is like a, a dad in waiting. Maybe mama's pregnant. Anybody? Got anybody here like that? Got, got one at least. Okay. So this is the thing. If anybody, anybody who wants to become a dad someday... All, any, any of the young men want to be a dad someday? Okay. All right, so this message is for everybody. Okay? Today I want to say this. I celebrate every dad in this room, and I celebrate you especially for, for, for being there for your kids. There's, there's so much going on in this world, and, 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 and you are here in the house of God. That is to be commended. There's a lot of men across this area doing a lot of things that are not about the Lord this morning. And I want to say thank you for, for being who you are and being in the house of God today. See, this is the cool thing about this area. In this area, I want to say this. In this area, we got some men. I mean, like, we got, like, manly men. We got men, like, who are so manly. I'm not sure, but you might be able to braid the hair on your back. I mean, you're so manly. It's kind of gross, but still, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> in this area, in this area, we, we have really just manly men. We've got, we've got men who go out and like kill stuff, drag it home, roast it in the fire, and feed your family. Uh, just for the record, I am not one of those. But for all of you who are, we've got really just some incredible men that are here. And, and I want to say this, you, you guys spend a lot of time passing it on to your children. Have we got any sons or daughters here that learn how to hunt or fish from your daddy? Right. So, I mean, this is something that's passed on, but I want you to hear me today. Today, I want you men especially, and, and women, I, you, you, you can catch part of this too, because I know that, uh, like for instance, my wife always gets her her mom a Father's Day card because she was both, as was my mom. My dad, you know, dad was around, but he was a thousand miles away. And so she had to be both for me. And my wife had to do the same thing. And there's women in this house that you don't maybe have your husband at home with you. And, and I want to say this, it's tough, but you can do it. You can do it. Denise and I are living proof that you can do it. You can raise your kids knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, being faithful to him by you doing it alone. It can happen. But men, hear me on this. It's a lot easier with us in the picture. And we do a lot in this area to pass things on to our sons in the natural we work out with them, we, we hunt with them, we fish with them, we, we do all of these things. But it's time for us, gentlemen, to do that in the house of God. It's time for us that we do that spiritually. We need to understand that, that our children need us, our wives need us, our nation needs us. But we need, in order to be able to fulfill what God has for, for us to do in the church, we, men, need to lead. 
There is something about a man. There's something about a man that gives anchorage to a family. Mama loves. I'll tell you what. My, I say this to her, and so this is not, this is not uh, in any way being negative about my mama. Mom, mom taught me how to love. I love my daughters hard. I love my daughters with a deep love. They know. They, if they wonder anything else, they never question their daddy loves them. That's never a question. And I learned how to love deep like that and show it by my mama. But I'll tell you what. Dads, you give anchorage to your family. You create a solidity upon which your children stand. You create a foundation that allows them to know who they are and what they're to do. Men, we need to begin to understand the impact that we have. Because the reality is this, families without fathers are a mess. These are some of the statistics from the United States. In, in households in the United States, 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90% of all homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of all children with behavioral disorders and psychological disorders come from fatherless homes. 71% of all high school dropouts are from fatherless homes. 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions for criminal activities are from fatherless homes. And 75% of adolescent Patients in abuse centers are from fatherless homes. This is crazy, too. 279% is the number that fatherless children are more likely to do drugs and carry guns than children with fathers at home. 279%. Men, our, our families need us. Our children need us. But if you want to wonder why our nation is where it is, it's because two-thirds almost of children raised in this country are raised without dad in the house. Now, I know that that is not the statistic here. But all the more that we need to show this nation what it means to be able to raise up a child in the way that they should go so that when they are old, they do not depart from it. To do that, men, we need to lead from the front. We need to become what in the military they call the point man. For anyone who doesn't know what the point man is, there was a word that was given to my brother Jared Renzo last week. When we were in prayer last week, we always make room for God to be able to speak. And, and the word that God gave Jared was that it was time to come out of, I believe he called a flank position, where you're in a line this way and you're trying to envelop the enemy. He said it's time for us to come into a ranger file, a ranger line. And a ranger line has a man in the front who's called the point man. He didn't know what I was going to preach this week. I knew last week what I was going to preach. What's funny is that he didn't tell us that word last week because he was chicken. <laughs> he, told, he told me that word on Thursday, not knowing what I was going to preach today. So I know I'm in the will of God. See, because this is the thing, and I want you to understand this about this church. If you're a member here, if you're visiting here, I want you to understand this one thing. This is not a normal church. I am not going to give you five ways to get your next job promotion. I'm not going to give you some psychological fix about how to, to make things work better in your life. I am going to offer you the power of the Holy Ghost. That's all I've got. I don't have a lot of cute answers. I'm not an incredible orator. But I will promise you this. You can get from him anything you need. We are called as a church to be the warrior tribe in this region. That is who we are. And it is time for us, as God's warrior tribe in this area, to come into alignment, 
to step into the ranger line and become led by the Holy Ghost primarily as our point man. That's why we're not going to just have church as normal. Thank you, you five people, for clapping. <laughs> See, because this is the thing. With the battles that are coming, cute little religion ain't going to have the answers. But you are not called to some cute little religion. You are called to be part of the family of God. You are called to live under the, the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to walk in that authority as kings and priests in this world and step into battle and win the victory for Jesus Christ. That is what we're called to. But in order to do that, gentlemen, we need to begin to lead from the front as never before. It is time for us to take the point position because we are in a war. We are not, hear me on this, some of us think we're in a battle for American values. We are not. We are in a battle for kingdom values. We are not in, in a war to try to, to, to bring things back to how it was when you were a kid, however old you are. The good old days were not the good old days if they did not involve Jesus Christ reigning as king. Amen. There is time for a brand new season where God desires for his people to fully see his kingdom realized in their lives and then in our communities of faith. And he's calling us, this church, to step into that. So today I ask you, in fact, today I tell you, gentlemen, it's time for us to take the point man position. I want to challenge you to be as big of a man in the house of God as you are outside of the house of God. Because there's a lot of men in this room that are flat, manly. I remember Jim Mullen came over to our house, was working on some stuff, like ripped off half his arm. Not really, but it makes for a better story. <laughs> He's bleeding all over the place, and he really was bleeding pretty good. And I said, should we, should we look at that? I mean, he's like, ah, oh, it's nothing. You know, he spit on it, rubbed some dirt in it, it was fine. <laughs> We've got a bunch of you guys like this in this room. We've got manly men who, who know what it is to be a man, but you know how, what it is to be a man outside of here. You might not know how to be a man in the house. It's time that today you decide that that changes. So I'm going to help you. Because I want to see, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see a tribe of men at a New Life Church where they rise up. I want it to be that when you walk down the street, you're in Tawanda, you're in Williamsport, you're in Elmira, you're, you're in D.C., I don't care where you are, that somebody sees you, and they might not know where you're from, but they say, that, there's an authority on that man I don't even understand. That they just see you walk in it because of who God made you. Today I want to help you discover what that looks like. I want to tell you flatly that I've, I'm relying on some research that I've done to some of our, war, our, our, our military heroes that are in the house. Men like Mike Komoreski, Jared Renzo, Steve Lambert, Tim Kennedy. I've asked questions about what it means to be the point man. And I want you to understand that everybody who's on the team is important. Everybody on the team is important. But the point man is in the front. And what he's looking for most, gentlemen, what he's looking for most is for any contact with the enemy. Because when that contact comes, if we're in the right position, hear me, gentlemen, if you're in the right spot... The first contact with the enemy is not made by your children. 
The first contact with the enemy is not made by your wife. The first contact with the enemy is made by you. When he comes for your family, he comes through you. One of the most powerful visions I've ever seen. Because the Lord was teaching me about his love for me. The Lord showed me what it would be if there was an invader in my house. And I saw this person walk through my door, and he was there and with malicious intent. He was there to hurt my family. And what I saw was what would really happen. I was here, and I put my wife and my daughters behind me, and I was just, the vision was this. If you're going to touch them, you're going to have to go through me. And it needs to be that that's our position spiritually. We need to be that man that no matter what comes into your house, that you are the first order of contact, gentlemen, because you're the authority. You're the priest of your house. And there's a lot of men in this house that like to come home and have dinner made for them. I know that. I know where I live. It's time for you to not just order your house that way, like you're the priest of the household for things you like. It's time for you to step up and be the leader. I need some men to amen me, because all these women, (laughs) they're going to amen me all day long. I need some men to say amen. Amen. (laughs) Thank you again for you five. (laughs) <laughs> See, the, the point man is going to be the one who protects the whole team. He's the one who is going to find the best way forward. If there's a river to cross, he's going to find the best way or the best location to cross it. Where it's safest and best. The point man gets direction from the mission on how to move forward. And a good point man makes sure that everybody is on track. Most important, hear this. Most important, a good point man makes sure that nobody gets lost. I'm going to say that again. A good point man, your most important job is that you make sure that nobody under your charge gets lost. So what does that look like? I'm going to give you three things. Three things that I believe the Lord gave me that were affirmed and confirmed by my brothers. When it comes to us being the point man in our homes, this is what we do. Number one, we establish direction. We establish direction. Gentlemen, we need to be an example to our families of what it looks like to be a Christian. Because we need to show them where to go and how to go. That is our job. Genesis 18 and 19 in the English Standard Version says this about Abraham. For I have chosen him, meaning Abraham, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. So that the Lord may bring Abraham what he has promised him. See, God chose the foundation, the father of faith, he's called. He chose him because of how he knew he was going to raise his children. He was going to tell his children what it was like and how to obey God so that, look at, look at what it says, that they might do righteousness and justice. Our job, gentlemen, is to show our kids, our wives, and the world what it looks like to live the Jesus life. We establish that direction. We set that course so that our children have an ability to follow us. I don't know if you're like me, but when I was... A younger father, my daughters would sometimes put on my shoes. And they put on my shoes and they're trying to walk. And you know what? It struck me one day that 
that that is really how it works. That, that they are going to put on the shoes that I wear. That they're going to walk in the steps that I walk. And if I walk in a way that is not going to be establishing righteousness and justice in my own life, that they are going to probably follow those same footsteps. And it is going to lead them into places that I would never in a million years want for them. Because it is my job as the point man in my house to establish the direction and to show them what life looks like lived with Jesus Christ. So number one, gentlemen, we set direction. Don't worry, you're getting ice cream floats after this. You're going to be fine. It's going to be all worth it in the end. But if you listen to this word, it'll change your house. Some of you don't know one, some of you are wondering why it is your wife is so miserable and why it is she doesn't trust you. It's because you're not modeling Jesus. You want to be happy? Start looking like him. Because when you look like him, she knows she can trust you. For all the trouble that Denise and I have had, one of them is not that she doesn't know that she can trust me. She knows that no matter what, I have followed Jesus to this place. I have followed him to places I never thought I would go. To places that I didn't, I didn't know I belonged until I showed up. See, but God has worked it out because I've set the direction by living for him. And in all the struggles that a married couple has, she does know that he's number one in my life. That is never the question. We set the direction. Number two, number two. The point man is protection. We protect the rest of the line because, again, if anyone's going to come, if any enemy is going to come, he's coming through me. In order to set that protection, we, gentlemen, have to choose Jesus over everything else. Amen. Let's just talk plain for a minute because everything competes to, for our time. Right now, right now, usually we're about done with service and you're probably, some of you are getting a little hangry. <laughs> Especially if your name is Jackie Stannis. <laughs> but this is the thing. When, when we are setting protection, we are establishing priorities. We are establishing that Jesus matters more than anything else. Everything competes for our time. Everything. Our kids, their sports, any recreation that we have, all of those things are things that, that start to pull us away. And, and sometimes, sometimes, hear me, I never have a problem with you going on vacation. I, I do have a problem, though, where if you're just like, you just want to sleep in today. Because you maybe need the rest. It's true. But what are you telling your kids? What are you telling your children? Hear me. What are you telling your children when you allow for every little sporting event and every little tournament and every little thing to come before Jesus and this place? And serving him here. What are you telling them? What are you telling them? See, we need to recognize that the threat that comes against us in this society right now is usually not some dude with an axe at our door or a machete or a gun. That's not how the enemy is going to attack you. He is going to attack you by distracting you. He's going to attack you by letting everything else other than God's presence, other than his ministry, to matter more than this. And when we allow it, when we allow for ourselves to fall into that trap and make everything else a priority, what ends up happening more times than I'd ever like to tell you is I'll end up with some parent 
in my office going, Johnny or Jane or whatever her name or his name is. I just don't even know what's going on with them. They're just gone wild. They've completely lost their mind. I, I don't even know what to do about it. But this is the problem, my brothers and sisters, but especially my brothers. Usually when we get to that place, they're just living out the, the values that you lived out in front of them. They grew up thinking that all that mattered was them and them having a good time and them being succeed, successful and them enjoying their little moment in the sun. And so they walked out of your house thinking that it was all about them when really... It's all about him. And if we don't communicate that to our children, they are going to have a really, really, really hard time living for God when the pressure really comes. Because, honey, this ain't the battle yet. You don't even know what's coming. God showed me stuff that would flat curl your hair. We have got to prepare our children. We've got to prepare our churches for what's coming. But it starts, gentlemen, with us. It starts with us leading from the front and protecting their priorities. Joshua chapter 24, very famous verse, says this in verse 15. If it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers, your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, whose land in which you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Some of my brothers need to stand up and say, no matter what, your buddies can go and have football practice on Sunday morning. Your, your buddies can go and have games of whatever kind. They can go to tournaments every week and be on travel team. And all that is good. And I want our kids to do it. But if you bow to that idol, don't be surprised what comes out of that worship. You need to stand and go, all your buddies might be doing that, but for, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's been a lot of days these two little girls, just so you know, they're half redheads, so they're a pain in the rear. <laughs> She's a full pain in the rear, just saying. <laughs> There's been a lot of days that they haven't wanted to do what I told them to do. They haven't wanted to come to church. They haven't wanted to go to youth group. They haven't wanted to go and help out with X, Y, and Z. But you know what I said? I said, as long as you're in this house, as long as you're here, you will come. And now I've got two little girls that were up here just a little while ago dancing. I got two little girls that, that love the Lord and are serving him. I got one going to Bible school and got another one who's pursuing God's purposes in her life, not because of anything more than the point man in their house said, no, you are going to serve Jesus. Is anybody with me? Yes. We have got to determine that we're going to protect our families by protecting our priorities. Jesus is first. Do you remember when he saved you? Do you remember where you were before he found you? Do you remember how desperate how emotionally wrecked and destroyed you were. Do you remember what it was like when he came and, and lifted you up by his presence and lifted your chin from the, 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 the dark place you were living in? Do you remember what that was like? Pass that to your children. Jesus still needs to be number one in your life. That is how we protect their priorities. So number one, we set direction. Number two is about protection. Number three, and this is my last point, 
Don't come yet, band. Is mission. We need to love. Gentlemen, I know that some of you grew up and your dad never told you, you loved, he loved you. I know that some of you probably never got a hug from your dad. My grandfather, a very stoic New England man, when I, I come from, the, I'm more the Mexican side, if you don't know. In my Mexican family, you hug everybody. You hug everybody. And I'd see my grandpa air, and, and he'd, go, he'd get up out of his chair and say, David, how are you? And I'd be like, do I get a hug? I mean, I'd just shake his hand. Very stoic. I understand that that's in some of you. But you've got to get past how you were raised. You need to love those kids hard. You need to love your wife hard. You need to love your family with the passion that Jesus loves you with. We need to love our families hard. I remember there's all these little things when, when Gabby was just born, and I, I mentioned Gabby a lot because I learned how to be a dad with her, but I told my wife, I told my wife, and I'm holding this little girl in my arms, and she's captivated our hearts. And I love her more than I love my next breath. And I said to my wife, I said, we're going to have to be hard on her because, because this world's a crazy place. But as hard as we are on her for discipline and for character and for growth, we need to love her harder. And I've, I've tried to do that with both my daughters. I've, I've tried that no matter what, that I'm loving them hard. I'm loving them hard and I'm loving them the way that they can be loved. Gabby loves dates with her dad. And so we'll go out on a date. We usually eat breakfast together because that's all we got time for anymore because Colin takes up all of her time. <laughs> I'm only half teasing. <laughs> so I steal away for a, a date with her. And Mariah, she, she refuses to go on dates with me. I finally had to kidnap her the other day. I tricked her into the car and drove off with her. I said, I'm kidnapping you and, uh, and we're going <laughs> we're gonna to have a date. But what I'll do with her is I'll, I'll just attack her. It's a sneak attack. She's usually laying on her bed, and I'll jump on her and tickle her and eat her neck and talk in her ear. And I always end up just telling her I love her. Because, because they have very different love languages, but see, I need to love them hard. They need to know that no matter what comes against them, whatever questions they ever have in their lives, all the things that this world wants to put on them, all the things that this world wants to tell them that they are and all that they're good for and everything else, I want them to, want, to, to know this one thing, that they mean the world to their daddy. So that no matter what other competition comes, they know that one thing. See, if we love our families hard, we love our families hard, then what ends up happening is we end up serving them in ways that communicate our love. I'll tell you what, my wife, her, her love language is, is acts of service, and so recently some of you have been scared to see that I've been pushing a wheelbarrow around my, my yard, and it actually does have dirt in it. <laughs> um, because, hear me. I like working outside about as much as most of you like dental work. <laughs> but she needs to know I love her. Gentlemen, when you're in the point position, what you want doesn't matter. Right. I eat last. I feed myself the things I enjoy last because I'm the point man and I'm going to love them hard. You see, when, when you love your family hard, that means that you need to love them so that they feel it. That they feel it deep. 
Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. When you teach your kid what it means to be loved by their father, they will love your grandchildren that way. And what we're talking about, a decision you make that may make you uncomfortable. A decision that you make that may make you feel like you're not in your comfort zone. That decision will have a legacy that they'll be able to point back to you and say, you know what, my dad wasn't always comfortable with that, but, but one day he started hugging me. One day he started telling me he loved me. One day he started... Loving me hard, and it changed our relationship. Yeah. And it will have a generational effect. And the, 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 the end result will be this. Malachi 4, 6 says this. It says, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And this is the effect. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. Lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. See, there's a, there's, hear this now. This is, the, this is the, maybe the most important thing I'm going to tell you today. See, everything I'm telling you, right now our nation is in turmoil. We are, we are completely un, just unsettled. This world seems like it's just being turned upside down, and it's not, unfortunately, by the gospel. But it is because too many fathers are at odds with their sons and their daughters. And too many daughters and sons are at odds with their fathers. God needs for us gentlemen, because he didn't name the mamas. Pull that scripture up again. Read it. He does not call for their children's heart to be restored to their mother's. He calls them to be restored to their fathers. Yeah. We, when we love hard, we create an opportunity for our children's hearts to come back to us. Whatever your past looks like, whatever trouble you've had, whatever mistakes you've made, when you love your children hard, you create an opportunity for God to come and restore not just your family, not just the relationships you have with your children, but the nation around you. Yeah. There is a very real possibility that this church in this region, with how together our families are, if we start modeling that scripture, that we can be the model that goes out around the country, that changes people's lives. That they'll come to this church and come to your house and go, how did you do it? Because in my opinion, the reason we are where we are is because, what is it, like 78% of, of uh, African American homes do not have their fathers in the house. You want to know why they, they're having trouble identifying themselves and why this is such catastrophic effect? It's because they don't have dads. What could we do? What could we do, church? What could we do if we start to really model this? If we really start to become the men that God created us to be? I want our band to come up. Elders, get ready. You see, when we teach, when we love our children hard, what they end up with is what's called security. Yeah. Tell you what, for all of the stuff that we've had to go through with our daughters, the one thing that is true about Gabrielle and Mariah is they are secure in who they are. And I believe that it's because their mama and their daddy loved them hard. Today, gentlemen, 
We need to determine that we are going to be the point men in our house. We need to determine that we are going to lead our families from the front. That we are going to set the direction of what it looks like to live a Jesus life. That we're going to do our job in protection by protecting their priorities and keeping Jesus number one. And we're going to protect the mission, which is to love, to love to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. To love these kids hard. To love your wives hard. That is our job. That is our job. A quote from one of our military men in this house said, A good point, man. Make sure nobody gets lost. Gentlemen, that's our job. God has given you this responsibility. He's given you this responsibility. Those children that you have, that wife you have, he didn't give them to you for fun. He didn't give them to you because you're just supposed to enjoy them. He gave them to you like Abraham was given his children, that they might be trained by you to live in righteousness and justice. That's our job. Our families need us. Gentlemen, I want you to hear me. Our families need us to be as manly in this house as you are in your house. That is our job. And so today, we're going to pray for you. Elders, I want you to come right now. The elders of this church are praying men and women. People who you don't even know the conversations we have, the prayers we pray, the way they look out for each of you. They Today, I've called them to come up here to pray for you. They are recognized leaders in the house. Do you have oil? They are recognized leaders in this house, spiritual leaders. And what they are going to do is for everybody, every man in this room, I want you to come up here and I want you to allow these men of God, just one of them, just got to go to one of them. This won't take real long. They're just going to lay their hand on you. They're going to anoint you with oil. They're going to pray for you to anoint you to lead your house. And then what I want them to do before you leave, I want you to get a little bit of that oil. I want you to put it on your hands. And I want you to go back to your family as the man of God who is now, no matter, hear me on this, no matter how you came in the house today, if you're leading from the back, I want you to come up here and get anointed to lead from the front. And when you go lay your hands on your family at the end of this service with that oil from your elder that is put in your hands and you go pray for them, you are no longer praying from the back. You are praying the blessing of God that comes from the man of God under the authority of Jesus Christ that you are going to lead from the front. So right now, I'm going to pray for you. Gentlemen, I want every man in this house, if you're able to stand, I'd like you to stand right now. If your wife is near you, I want you to put your hand on your husband. And we're going to pray. 
Receive this right now. Just receive it. Just receive it. By the power of the name of Jesus Christ, I break every stronghold. I break every fear. I break every level of discomfort. Everything that limits the man of God that stands before you right now, Lord, I break those things off of them in Jesus' name. I agree with their wives. Wherever they are in this building or around the world, I don't care. I agree with them now in Jesus' name that the man of God that stands up stands for you, stands under your authority, and is going to follow you, is going to lead your house by, Lord God, your wisdom, obeying you. That their lives, Lord God, would be trained in righteousness and justice, as with Abraham. I declare right now the blessing of the Lord over you. In Jesus' name.